I have a few thoughts about Queen Charlotte's story. <sighs> Why did they have to give the black woman the extra, <laughs> extra struggle love story? Because Lady Danbury's husband, jump scare. And I remember when I did the announcement and I was like, okay, I'm gonna get a thousand subscribers in like two weeks. Bearing in mind that on my previous channel, I had 19K subscribers, 19,000 people. And I checked this, I was like, I only saw like 200 or something. I was thinking, ah, you know, Shelley. <laughs> Have I missed my time? I remember that was a question I was asking myself. Have I missed my time? Have I missed my chance? Will I ever rise again? Welcome back to the show, lovely people, gorgeous people. In terms of Deeper With Mo, we're talking about feeling forgotten and, you know, finding your flow again, feeling forgotten as a creative, as a person, as an individual, um, in your career and refining your voice, refining your flow, refining your tribe and all, all that great stuff. Now, this is something that I personally went through um, last year. I was feeling very, 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 very forgotten for a long time. So to give you a bit of background, some of you may be new to, you know, my work, the show, to this particular platform, but I've been in the creative game for about 10 years now. Yeah, I think it's, it's now 10 years. I've been in the creative game for 10 years. I believe I opened my channel in 2013 and yes, 2023 now. And I've been doing the Mo Chunk show for a long time and, you know, it's been, it's, it's been a long time in, and it's been a beautiful journey, you know, learning, growing, thriving, sometimes experiencing dips, the highs and the lows of it all. And um, one thing about me, I've really shown up over the years. I've really been consistent, um, even when it hasn't been rewarding, but especially when it's been rewarding, it's, it's felt nicer um, along the way. Um, so I believe it was last year. So I, I got married a year and a half ago. I got married in 2021, late 2021. And at the time I took a break from my show, um, just to kind of relax from like wedding planning. I'm very introverted. So I'm the kind of person that I can easily get burnt out. And once I'm there, I need time to really unwind, relax and of course, I wanted to enjoy my marriage, um, and I was really, really enjoying being a content creator. I was really enjoying like influencing. This was around the time that I started doing like fashion content on like Instagram, here and there on YouTube. Was sharing more vlogs, more lifestyle content. I was really feeling that vibe. But at that time, I was getting a bit tired of talking, shall I? On my show, doing debates up and down. I was getting a bit tired of it. So I gave myself a break and, you know, um, I also said to myself, another reason I got tired of my show was because I was a one man band. I was doing it mainly by myself. Um, I had a bit of a, a win in 2019 prior to the pandemic where, you know, we managed to get a subscription to a studio. So I had a studio space where I could have my equipment and, you know, would film my show and, you know, I had, um, Toby, bless his soul, who turned out to be my cousin, the irony of that. <laughs> I had Toby who used to help with like camera work. So it felt a bit easier, you know, instead of setting up all the time, the equipment was just there. I had Toby helping with camera, you know, we set up together, that kind of thing, packed down together um, and, you know, filmed the show. So it got really easy at that time. And then in the pandemic, everything got shut down. You know, I started doing Adagwe, Adafa again. When it comes to my show, I started doing it all by myself. So I was really tired, I was tired. I just wanted a break. And I said to myself, I'm not gonna bring my show back until I build a team this time round. Like, I feel like that's one of my mistakes as a creative. Cause I'm the kind of person that when I have an idea, I like to just do it. And, you know, initially 
I did, um, when I first started, um, I, I did try to outsource things, but I was just getting disappointed with like the editor will be late, that kind of thing. I just said, ah, well, let me learn this thing myself. So, you know, I learned at the time with one of my, one of my brother's friends called IK, you know, he edited one of the, the first few videos on my channel for me. I'd watch him on his iMac back then. And then I began to give it a go as well. And it was it was going going well. And I learned production as time goes it went along as we developed the channel into like Mochunks TV, where we did like production. So over time, I learned how to do a lot of things by myself. And that, guys, is a blessing and a curse sometimes. Because when you know too much, I too know some of us are wise. <laughs> Every other person over why sometimes when you know too much it can actually be your detriment as well as something that you know boosts your journey because you you quickly become a one-man band and you quickly become burnt out because it's like I can do it, so why not to do it? It's cheaper, easier, faster <laughs> to do it yourself. But of course, as time goes along, as you grow older, become an adult, you have responsibilities, your time is not as easily available as it used to be you find yourself a lot more stretched and you feel like oh wow like so it was later later i realized i need help like i can't do this thing by myself so i was saying to myself you know literally when i just first got married i was like okay i want to do my show but i just i'm a bit tired of doing it by myself so that was my mission in 2022 find and develop a team so i brought toby back on board um, you know, brought Shay in, you know, makeup artist Sandra, um, pre-producer Agnes, brought brought people in, um, editors at the time, you know, and, you know, we're going on like that. And at the time, I also got a job so that I can kind of, to help the financial side of things. And that was going on well. That was kind of going on well in terms of team building. And then I had this grand idea, <laughs> To split my channel into three um, where the channel where my show was previously aired on or displayed on is now my personal channel where I do my fashion and my lifestyle content. I remember I said I was really loving that and I've been doing that on that channel and then I moved my show for the new season with you know being produced with the team. I moved it to this channel that you're seeing now and I remember when I did the announcement and I was like okay I'm gonna get a thousand subscribers in like two weeks. Bearing in mind that on my previous channel, I had 19K subscribers, 19,000 people. And you know, the announcement video that I did, I believe um, thousands of people watched it, yeah. And I was expecting that, oh, everyone's gonna, you know, I still saw the comments, it's doing so great more, da 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 da. And I checked it, I was like, I only saw like 200 or something. I was thinking, ah, you know, Shelley. <laughs> Did they not love my show? Maybe I've left it for too long. Um, because I believe at the time that I came back, it was around April that I began this channel. I was thinking, ah, like, what's going on? Is people not feeling it? But I should have consoled myself. I should have said, okay, maybe it's just a thing where I need to start creating the content and the subscribers will come. And lo and behold, yes, as I was creating the content, I was doing my show, people were subscribing on the new channel, but I still felt this like resistance. And I remember just feeling very forgotten. Like I felt forgotten. I felt like oh, I've done so much in the creative industry, um, in terms of my personal projects, you know, events, that kind of thing. Um, and I just really felt forgotten. I was like, you know, really battling with myself in a sense of, oh, can someone not take a break again? <laughs> and that's what it feels like as a creative. You feel like, if you're not there consistently showing up, um, like when you come back, like no one's gonna remember you, there's gonna be something in you on the scene, you're not gonna be as important, you're not gonna be as relevant. Um, initially I was like, I, sh I should be okay to take a break and come back. Um, and you know, it should be okay for me to move my content to a new channel, but it was kind of like my, I was going into it very positive and then I was hit with like, a negative outcome if that makes sense it was like a bit too slow for what i expected basically based on what i had built you know over the last 10 years or so so it started to feel like 
you know, I'm, I'm, I felt like I was starting from here, but it starts to feel like I was starting from like here, um, which is a bit discouraging. I felt forgotten by um, people. I felt forgotten by my fans. Um, I wouldn't say I, I felt forgotten by God. I'm someone that I'm very close to God, but I also feel like that is an angle to, to bring out in this episode because I understand and I can empathize with that feeling of being feeling forgotten. And I can understand if you as a person that's watching this video have felt forgotten by God at certain moments in your life, especially when you've seen like wins in the past or you've seen like God come through for you before. And then in some in a new season, it feels like uh, like Ulua, where's your face? Would you either like if you feel like God has forgotten you in your new season, even though you feel like God is. Is, is guiding you towards this thing. I really felt strongly that this was the, the time to kind of distinctive, to make my brands, my different brands distinctive in a sense of that to me as a content creator, um, influencer, doing the fashion and the lifestyle content. This is me on this channel as a presenter. And eventually when I bring back my Chunks TV, that will be me as a producer doing my various productions. So I felt it was very important, but then I was feeling like the reaction, I was feeling like, oh but God, you guided me into this thing. Like what's, what's going on? Why am I not seeing your grace and your favor in the way that I expected it? Um, and it's interesting because there was no formula to kind of get me through that, except for, you know, me continuing and doing what I know how to do best, which is which was to continue showing up. It was a very awkward season for me. And like I recently posted on my Instagram that it's an amazing feeling when you find your flow again. Like there were, it just felt like there was so much resistance initially when I began on this new channel. Um, it felt like, you know, people didn't really care about my content. Of course, there are people that are watching me, but sometimes you, because of what you have in your head, the expectation you have in your head of how big you want it to be, um, you feel like this is this is not enough or you don't appreciate what you have. Um, I was grateful, but it's just like I was expecting more. Do you understand? And yeah, I felt a lot of resistance, but then I think it was like March, April this year. April generally was really transformative for me, but before I get to that, I think it was March. I be I just I began to feel it. Like you know when, and I'm a feeler. You know I'm very sensitive physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And I felt like spiritually as well. There was like there was a there was a new flow that I began to feel. I began to feel comfortable again as a presenter on this channel with my topics. Um, began to get yeses from people to appear on the show um just very randomly even though like before we've been trying and trying and trying and you know it's interesting that it kind of came around the time that for me as well I sat down and I really found out okay what do I want to do with the show you know what's our mission statement you, if you heard at the beginning of the show we have a mission statement you know which is this is a, a platform where we do our best to inspire and educate you to live well and thrive in your faith career and relationships through conversations events and more and it was really when i got to define that and also outline some things for myself as a businesswoman because content creation presenting doing things online there is the passion, but there's also the business side of it. So I believe in that season as well, um, around that March time, God was really downloading to me the business plan side of it as well. There was the passion, there was the mission statement, there was also, okay, how are we going to monetize this? And it was really, really interesting to me. Nothing is a coincidence to me, but I found it really interesting that it was when I really outlined those things and really gain clarity that I began to see flow both in myself as a creative and how I'm showing up and also with how um, you know guests began to respond to me and also how the audience began to respond to you know what we're creating so it was a really nice season for me because I finally you know when like you know um, what I'm seeing in my head the imagery I'm seeing in my head is like a pipe an oil pipe specifically and it's like a stock like um, what you might call it, 
maybe not an oil pipe, a water pipe, and there's muck and there's dirt in the way. And the water is really trying to push, you know, it's trying to push, you know, it's trying to push, the wind was taking me back. <laughs> it's really trying to push, and all you can see is the muck. Um, and then that's what, that's what the first nine months or so felt like when I came back um, as a presenter. When, like, when I first created this channel, and then all of a sudden it just felt like the force, there was just a, like a force, like, and it just pushed all the dirt, the rest of the dirt out, and the water began to flow clear. Like, that's the imagery that I'm seeing in my head in terms of describing what March felt like. And the amazing thing about that is then April following that was then very, very transformative for me personally as an individual. Um, you know, the live well and thrive aspect of, and thrive aspect of, you know, the slogan is actually very personal to me as well as, you know, what I want to help others through in the sense of, I think my life has been focused on the thrive part in a sense of what are my goals? What are the things that I'm pursuing um, in terms of my career? What are my goals in terms of relationships? What are my goals in terms of my faith? I mean, you know, faith is, you know, in, in conjunction with wellness, because I believe your spiritual side, you know, is very important in terms of holistic wellness. But it's like, I was always pursuing something. And I wasn't so much focused on living well. Um, and April was very transformative for me because it's a time when I refocused on bringing the focus back on and prioritizing me as a person, as a human being, um, as an individual. Like before you pursue those goals that you have in life, what is your holistic wellness looking like? Are you looking after yourself? Are you enjoying your life? Um, are you um, resting enough? Like, what is your wellness saying? And yeah, it's very. It was very, very personal for me. And in April, April was the month that I really got to put that in motion. That I really got to put that in practice. You know, got back in the gym in terms of you know consistently um, working out. When I began, you know, working part time, you know, my fitness regime. Pff, went all the way down and one of the things that used to make it easy for me was being freelance so I could be flexible with my time could randomly go to the gym in the middle of the day maybe I'm getting tired of you know my creative work whatever I'm doing I could be very very flexible but then when you're working you know nine to five not as flexible so that kind of went downhill but April was a month where I really worked out you know sustainable systems for myself with the time that I've got, I worked out, hey, where can I, where are the pockets of time that I can go to the gym? I started practicing that and, you know, I started seeing, like, the difference in, like, how consistently I could show up because of those sustainable system systems. So that was very, very transformative for me um, as an individual. And you can see, like, I, I was even saying to my husband this morning, I just feel so happy. I just feel, I feel gorgeous. Like, I feel... I feel like I'm glowing from within. I don't know whether it's showing to you guys, but it just, I feel like I'm looking at myself like, wow, like I'm just seeing the joy radiating um, because I've, I've been able to get my fitness under control. I've also been enjoying like new experiences. I've had like lovely life experiences here and there, um, but like I've been more intentional about, okay, um, there's this event going on. That this, These are the things that you're interested in. Why don't you go and meet these people? Um, why don't you go and have fun here? Just like having a new life experience. Like I went bouldering the other day. <laughs> and funny enough, I put that on my list as one of the things that I really wanted to, to do this year in terms of my personal goals. There's some other things on there that I really want to achieve. Like I, for me as a person and, you know, rock climbing was on there. We went bouldering, which is indoor rock climbing. Um, that was so random, but it's like I went back to where I wrote those things and I was like, oh, I've done that. And the, the interesting thing about that is that the more I've been like presenting myself for things like that, random, fun opportunities and like life experiences like that, the more like someone will call me up like, do you want to come to this? 
you know, an opportunity for an event will come up, I'll just see it on my socials, I'll call her at one of my friends, you know, I've just been really, really having a good time, um, and I'm in a really, really good place, um, and finding my flow again, like I said, I, there was no real strategy, I just continued until, until the flow came, and I was so, 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 so happy when it, you know, things started to flow again for me. We've just hit 1,000 subscribers on this channel, Woo! and we are so close to being monetized as well. Um, YouTube's requirements for being monetized, you have to have 1,000 subscribers, number one, and, um, what's the second thing? I think it's 4,000 watch hours, and I believe we're, like, three five three seven so we're, we're like um, almost there guys so um and one thing i didn't want to do is like get people to subscribe just so we can get monetized like i genuinely want and that's another thing with this channel as well i genuinely want people that are subscribing to be to the channel who find value in the content like i don't want to just gain subscribers to gain subscribers and that was another thing on my previous channel i find that some people will watch this kind of content they won't watch that one some people were interested in this one i wanted this channel to be for the people that like my show they know where to find the content and they genuinely find value they've in it they then we find value in like the events we're going to be doing as well and you know we're generally creating a community and it's very clear and very distinct um so that's another reason why i didn't really say oh guys subscribe so i can get monetized no 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 i really wanted it really wanted it to be organic i really wanted it to be natural um people come in to view because they they want to view um and there's 1000 of us now which is amazing thank you guys so much for subscribing and honestly i feel like the flow can only get better from here um I, i'm reminded actually thank you holy spirit i'm reminded of um you know scripture that um when i was writing the notes for this i was reminded of joseph and you know in terms of feeling forgotten by people and feeling forgotten by god and um did you guys know that joseph was in the prison for 12 years um at the time when you know potiphar's wife light on him hello gorgeous people thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode if you would like to see the rest of the visual side of this episode you can go to my patreon via the link in my bio and become a patron the patron or patron <laughs> become a patron of my content on there so you get some exclusive longer length videos or full length videos on there or you can listen to the full audio version for free on a podcast app of your choice, such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so much more. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you in the next episode. Bye.